You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. Then there's girls in the club too. And then she pointed another direction. It's another dude over there, like butt ass naked. Dancing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we take off, man. You know what I'm saying? We lead. The new allegations against John Diddy Combs, a music producer, is accusing hip hop mogul of sexually assaulting him and forcing him to have sex with prostitutes. But a lawyer for Combs called the events described in the lawsuit pure fiction. Yeah, check this out. We don't we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense, my brother. So we're not even going to even go there. With Diddy slammed with yet another lawsuit, it doesn't seem like the record producer will be able to catch his breath anytime soon. From all angles, Diddy looks like he's buried under a mountain of allegations. Unfortunately for him, folks like Exhibit are adding to the pile. The Detroit-born rapper dropped a bomb by revealing how Diddy once tried to drag him to a gay club. Exhibit is not the first one to accuse Puff of such kind of behavior. The music mogul's reputation has been tainted with allegations like these over the years. He's been accused of forcing men into secret FOs and filming them for his own pleasure, and though he's repeatedly denied the rumors, Exhibit's words have landed him in a world of trouble. Just what happened? What did Exhibit say? And did Diddy really lure him into FOs with men? Let's find out. Man, man, I ain't gonna touch that shit, man. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Over the years, Diddy's sexuality has become a subject of interest for folks quite a number of times. Just to clarify, no one's objecting to the record executive liking men. Sure, back in the 90s, Diddy had to stay on the down low about his sexuality given the rampant homophobia in the industry. However, this is the 21st century. Things have changed. We've got quite a few gay rappers in the game these days. So if Diddy really did like men, it would have been perfectly okay for him to come out of the closet. However, that's not the problem. Most folks have an issue with Diddy weaponizing his experience experiences with men for devious reasons. He has even been accused of forcing straight men into intimate encounters and filming them for his own satisfaction. And this is where Exhibit's words come in. What's your story? Yeah, what happened? Nah, I mean, well, uh, as a single man, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> I have no shame in my game with okay. that. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I was at the time. And we went to um, uh, Florida. We got invited to a, a puffy party, the New Year's Eve party. Uh -huh. we went to the party. You know, all um, dudes. Yeah, yeah, nah, it was actually a good party. Back in 2009, the internet was ablaze as the rapper threw Diddy under the gay bus. During an interview with Sirius Satellite's Foxhole Radio, X spilled the tea about how Diddy dragged him to a gay club. It started with Puff introducing Exhibit to video vixen Karini Steffens at his New Year Eve's party. She takes me, she, you know, she, Puffy calls me outside. He's like, hey man, you know, the, um, that, that girl, you, you know about the girl you watch? Like, yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? What's happening? You know what I'm saying? He's like, uh, you know, that's the devil, man. You know what I'm saying? I was like, what the you mean that's the devil? The devil got a pretty mouth. Yeah, and I was like, what <laughs> you mean that's the devil? You know? And then he was like, yeah, man, she she Fingers in the book. Diddy's words confused Kizabit big time. He confronted Karini about his comments, but she only laughed it off, saying that she would fill him in later. Little did Exhibit know that he was in for more surprises down the line. You know what that mean? So then, so then I go back in the house and I ask her, "What are you talking about?" He, he you said you're a filmer. Him? Yeah, I, I did ask him. He's just like whatever. And he went off and did his thing. And I was, was like, he okay. limping? <laughs> 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 he walked away and the nail fell out his boot. No, I'm clear. Cause I ain't was, gonna, listen, I'm not gonna have me. my name. I ain't gonna have my name out there crazy <laughs> like that. Go ahead, go ahead. So then, so then, so then he say, so then she say. Uh, I told him what he he told me, and she was like, oh, she started laughing like. A I'll tell you later. Later, Diddy invited the rapper to a nightclub along with Kareem. Not thinking much of the situation, Gazebit said yes without giving it a second thought. So then, so then I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to make a big deal of it, whatever. So, so then he's you no, know, then, then I guess he had some prior incident with her that he don't want nobody to know about. You know what I'm saying? So we get into the truck. He said, let's go to this club. So everybody following the, the, the car, the car, silent. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we get to this club, and then we walk in the back, the way, back way, it's a VIP lounge, ain't nobody in there. However, imagine his surprise when he walked in the club and was surrounded by half-naked men making out. Xebit hadn't signed up for that situation, and so he left the club faster than the wind. He didn't even bother saying his greetings to Diddy before leaving. And then, you know, the club is going, it's all jumping, and then I'm sitting there with, with old girl. So, I, so, so then, so then, so then uh, you know, he, he's doing his business. We go down and get a drink. You know, we sitting there bobbing to the music. And then she say, she point over the corner. It's two dudes kissing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. Then it's girls in the club, too. And then she point another direction. It's another dude over there, like, butt-ass naked dancing. Bosworth Bennett. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we 
we take off, man. You know what I'm saying? We leave the club. So At first, he wanted to think it was a mistake on Diddy's part. However, X has been to his fair share of clubs, and he said that he's never messed up like that, implying that Diddy picked that club for a reason. X's words had managed to shake the world of hip hop. Articles were popping left and right, speculating about Diddy's sexuality. But this is where things take a turn. Not long after the interview, X found himself clearing up the air. He released a statement saying, I have no beef with Diddy. Wow, so I wake up this morning and my phone is going nuts. I turn on the computer and find all this shit about me throwing Diddy under the gay bus, whatever that means. All this spin that you journalists are putting on the statements I made on a radio show to directly affect a guy in a manner not intended is wrong. I got a call yesterday, which caught me off guard, from Diddy himself stating the club was an after-hours spot called Space, I believe. He blamed media outlets for twisting his words and painting a false narrative about the music mogul, saying, the rumor mill that has ground this bullshit out to be the shitstorm that it is, is doing so on its own accord. Like I said at the top, I have no beef with Diddy. But wait, a bigger problem I see is the negative stance these hip-hop sites and blog sites are taking when speaking of gay people in general. All I can say to that is, people grow up. I do not like to spread hate and make it a point not to do so, so this is not the way I intended this interview to unfold. X ended his statement with the words, You heard it directly from me, ladies and gents. I'm looking forward to the issues at hand that really mean something to both my fans and Diddy's as well. Art and music. On the surface, it seems like X really was providing an explanation for his words and stopping it from escalating into a full-blown controversy. However, that's where you're wrong. You see, Diddy is regarded as a man who always gets what he wants in the industry. If someone says or does something he doesn't approve of, well, that certain someone can either make amends or start counting his days. Take Al B. Sure for one. The singer had kicked up a storm online following Kim Porter's passing as he pointed an accusatory finger at Diddy. Al B. had managed to grab the internet's full attention with his words, and for Diddy, that was bad for business. And so you can guess what happened. Soon, Al B. was fighting for his life in a hospital. According to official reports, the rapper had suffered from a stroke. But people like Jaguar Wright believe that Diddy was the one behind Al B's brush with death. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. Yeah. Andre Carell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Bearing that in mind, a lot of folks think that Diddy might have rang up X following his interview and threatened him to fix the situation or face the consequences. Not wanting to make an enemy out of one of the most influential people in the industry, X went with the former. And if you think that's a stretch, how about you watch this video of X when he's asked about the Diddy gay club situation years later? Bro, <laughs> history, just that quick. Speaking of the club, right, I heard you tell a story before about how Puffy, he took you to a club before and you seen a whole lot of men kissing <laughs> and you seen a whole lot of weird stuff going on. You know, you seen a whole lot of gay stuff going on. If you don't mind, man, what's the backstory behind that? <laughs> man, 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 I ain't gonna touch this shit. It's been talked about. Shout out to Puffy. Love, you know what I'm saying? All good. We go, we go leave, leave that alone, man. That shit put to bed. Notice his nervous laugh and his reluctance to talk about the situation. His demeanor sparks concern, especially when he was so enthusiastic about recounting the incident before. And if you still think Exhibit was making up the story, well, how about you pick up the 2005 memoir, Confessions of a Video Vixen, by Karin Steffens. The American author single-handedly had the world of hip-hop shaking in its boots with her tell-all book. Karin wrote about servicing prominent rappers in the industry, including the likes of Jay-Z and Diddy. According to her, Diddy once invited her over to his house and kicked his assistant, Fonsworth Bentley, out of the room so he could have some alone time with her. But that's not the shocking bit. Karina wrote about the dark side of the industry and how all the men she crossed paths with were blinded by fame and money, including Diddy. She also confirmed Exhibit's story in her book, adding yet another layer of authenticity to his allegations. Unfortunately for Diddy, there's a long line of people, making the same kind of accusations against him. Take Fat Jew for one. The American entrepreneur, real name, Josh Ostrovsky had the opportunity to attend one of Diddy's parties, and boy, did he regret it big time. Is there anything that you want to talk about I that? Wanna, uh, I want to talk about... You want people to know about. Oh. I don't know if this story that I have about P. Diddy is a thing oh, that I'd people love, know I'd about. love it. During one interview, Fat Jew got into detail about what exactly went down. According to him, the event was attended by hundreds of people. Interestingly, he found a lot of girls at the event. Fat Jew had taken some happy pills, as had most of the guests at the event. <laughs> 
goblins. I went to a party on Star Island in Miami uh, where P. Diddy has a private residence. I mm-hmm. had no business being there. Mm-hmm. I was with a famed uh, house producer who was DJing the party. Sure. And I will keep his name out of it. Yep. And I took a whole bunch of ecstasy because everyone there was taking ecstasy. It was basically me and like beautiful like ethnic models, mm-hmm. like just beautiful women who I obviously had no interest in. Cause yeah. like, that's it's a, a, the big pimpin video. Because that's not my type. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to stick to Peppa, please. Yeah, we're going to stick to Peppa, <laughs> Peppa. And, and ghouls from Us Weekly. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I'm, I'm like kind of stumbling around. It's like, you know, it's all like, you know, my man is telling me that like, you know, every third person is some executive, mm-hmm. you know, got behind the scenes guys who I don't recognize. It's a high-end crowd. Very high-end. And okay. there's no joke, there's maybe a hundred people. Okay. I mean, it's int- so serious. Have- By this point, everything was going rather well until Fat Jew had to look for the bathroom. According to him, the mansion was built like a maze, and he had a hard time finding his way in the sea of bodies. So, long story short, I am on ecstasy, and I'm trying to find the bathroom, mm-hmm. and I can't find the bathroom, and, and I just kind of like go down a flight of stairs, and now I'm in like the inner windings of the mansion. Yeah. Most of it's going down by the pool. Okay. You know, cabanas and stuff. Dragon's Lair. Yeah, dra- dra- yeah, we're getting serious. So, I get lost... And I'm in, like, just a maze of rooms. Yeah. Now, I'm looking for the bathroom. I start opening doors. One's, like, a closet. One's a room. It doesn't have a bathroom in it. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Um, every room should have a bathroom in it. Dude. That makes sense. First if of all. If you're in this fucking every dungeon. Room should yeah. have, right. Every house should so have. Yeah. As Fat Jew made his way around the mansion, he ended up opening the door to a room full of men, and weirdly enough, they were all leaning on one another. Fat Jew found the situation a little alarming, but unfortunately for him, it got even weirder. Guess who he found seated among the half-naked men? Door, and in that room, there are a bunch of men Mm -hmm. and they're all kind of like very like Romanesque like laying about and you know kind of like very like kind of leaning on each other not really spooning but like conversationally spooning like if you were spooning but facing each other and like leaning up on your elbow and talking like like, how about this like in public watching TV with a bunch of your friends and you're with your girlfriends right yes it would be like those guys kind of lounging on their girlfriends but they're not fucked Public, fucking, right. Like you almost think that they should be feeding each other grapes, uh-huh. you know, stuff like that. Okay. Like, it was very like regal lounge, very erotic. Okay, all right, like, heavy erotic. Yeah, like uh, like the drawings you would see of like old Greek. Yes, uh, right. hangouts. exactly. Yeah, I or, like a, or like a fat Greek woman like laid on her side. Yeah, it you would know. almost be the prelude to an orgy. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. It was none other than Diddy himself who was suspiciously sitting right next to Felix Da House Cat, famed house music producer. Yeah, no, I know are that is. Basically spooning each other. <laughs> I swear to God, they're basically spooning and they're drinking. Drinking a glass of Hennessy, and they're like sharing it. They're like passing it back and forth. And everyone's talking. And everyone's just like talking. Yeah. And then as soon as I see them, I'm like, all men though. There's not one woman in this room. All men. And yeah. they're all 100 percent on ecstasy. Like you can see Diddy's in like white linen, being like, oh, my oh, God. God, like rub eyes on my nipples, right? You know, like <laughs> oh, you're one of my best friends. Right. So the minute I make eye contact with him, like a gigantic bouncer comes over and says, like, get. Because a lot of people turned and looked at me because it was very unexpected that, like, a fat guy with an afro, right. with, like, no shirt on, basically, like, a, an open windbreaker, <laughs> right. opened the door to, like, this, like... You- it was clear that Fat Jew had opened the wrong door at the wrong time, and so using all of his brain cells, he decided to leave the room for the better. However, that five-second eye contact with Diddy would come to bite him back. Apparently, Diddy and Fat Jew ended up crossing paths at a press event for a film, following the awkward confrontation. The music mogul was in the middle of giving an interview when Fat Jew caught his eyes in the crowd. Interestingly, he stopped the interview right then and pointed at Fat Jew, asking him where he had seen him before. Not prepared for the sudden question, Fat Jew ended up blurting out Miami, and guess what? Diddy got real silent after that. We're at a junket for a movie that he was in. Uh, someone is interviewing him. I'm in the back as a friend of someone who was there. Mm-hmm. I'm all the way in the back. I'm behind a million publicists and a million people. But you see him. Well, he's being interviewed on and the And you're thinking about it. Oh, I'm thinking about it the whole time. Yeah. By the way, anyone I ever told the story to was like, oh, you're a liar. I don't think you're a liar. Everybody was like, you're a liar. Like, I'm sure something happened, and they knew I was on Star Island. Like, that was verified yeah. by the other person I was with. Sure. But people were like, you're a liar. You didn't see them sharing a glass of Hennessy. Like, you didn't see Prelude to, like, an orgy. It's bullshit. Like, right. you're being funny. Like, that juice hilarious. Sure. So, um, a couple of people said they believed me, but I think they were lying. So, <laughs> um, he looks, he's being interviewed in the middle of the interview for this movie. I mean, I'm sure you can guess what movie it is. Because I think he was only in a movie. Right. Um, at least recently. Yes. He literally stops the interview and he points at me all the way in the back and he goes, yo, you, my man. And everyone in the room turns around and looks at me and he goes, where do I know you from? Oh, no. And then I go, Miami. And he goes, oh, true. 
and we locked eyes again and he knew that I knew that he knew that I knew that he knew that I knew (laughs) that he drinks the milk of other men. Seems like Diddy was not too enthusiastic about interacting with Fat Jew after he realized that he had walked in on one of his alleged FOs and caught him in the act. Meanwhile, Fat Jew found himself fearing for his life after crossing paths with Diddy at the press event. His worries were valid since the music mogul has earned a reputation for removing people from the board. To avoid ending up on that list, Fat Jew chose to speak about his experience online so that in case something did happen to him, folks would know who to suspect. There has been no follow-up. Were you nervous at all in like a Breaking Bad kind of way that maybe people were going to be sent to your house or something? Like, 100%. Because I'd be a little nervous. See, now, what what I'm doing to combat that is by talking about it publicly on on the podcast. Yeah, because this will come back. Right, right. Because I'm most safe if I talk about it publicly. That's so crazy. Right. Looks like Fat Jew made the right decision because he's still alive and well today. Though Diddy was almost exposed, that never stopped him from continuing with his ways, which is why he's facing his biggest battle to date now. After Cassie rocked Diddy's world with the lawsuit of the century, it's now music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones's turn as he filed a lawsuit against the music mogul in a federal court in New York. Lil Rod has made all kinds of wild accusations in his lawsuit, accusing Diddy of human trafficking and mingling with young girls. According to the music producer, Diddy's head of security, Fahim Muhammad, had the power to make people and problems disappear. He served as an intermediary between Diddy and the LAPD in case trouble came knocking. And get this, apparently all of Diddy's staff members were instructed to contact Fahim in case they were ever pulled over by traffic police. However, Jones's chief complaint is that Diddy tried to force him into intimate encounters. He had the opportunity to work with the record producer on his record, the love album Off the Grid. Jones worked on six songs for the album and was promised compensation beyond his imagination if he met Diddy's sinister wishes like getting into bed with him. According to Jones, he had lived with the music mogul from September 2022 to November 2023 at his homes in Florida, Los Angeles, New York, and even a rented yacht on the U.S. Virgin Island at one point. During his time, he was subjected to unwanted advances by associates of Diddy at his direction. He was also apparently forced to work with Combs in his bathroom while he took a shower. And before any of you ask, Jones did take up the matter with Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Corum. However, her words were a slap in the face as she said that Sean will be Sean, while completely ignoring the situation that Jones was in. To make it worse, she said that the advances were Puff's way of showing that he liked him. Under these circumstances, Jones decided to take matters into his own hands. He recorded hours of audio and video footage of Diddy engaging in illegal activities, from distributing illegal substances to interacting with young girls. Jones also believes that Diddy was responsible for intoxicating him on February 2nd, 2023, as he woke up naked in his bed along with two workers without any memory of how he ended up in that situation. What's more, Diddy had asked him to wear a bad boy baseball cap at a club in Miami to let any worker know he wanted to be approached. Jones also exposed Diddy's son, Justin Combs, saying that he was directly involved in his father's FOs. He was apparently in charge of scouting workers for the encounters. However, his reps have denied the allegations, saying, Justin Combs categorically denies these absurd allegations. They are all lies. This is a clear example of a desperate person taking desperate measures in hopes of a payday. There will be legal consequences for all defamation statements made about the Combs family. With Diddy going off the bandwagon, the responsibility of keeping him on a tight leash fell on Ethiopia Habtamariam, the former CEO of Motown Records. She used to visit Combs' home while he worked on the Love album. Her job was to make sure he wasn't trying illegal substances or getting up to naughty business with young girls. Jones also revealed that Diddy had dabbled in weapons. According to him, the record producer boasted about shooting people and getting away with it. Mind you, Diddy's long been suspected of being responsible for taking out a long list of people, including the likes of Tupac Shakur and Biggie. If you were shocked so far, well, gear up because we haven't even served the main course yet. Jones didn't just go after Diddy in his lawsuit. He name dropped a lot of big hitters in the industry, including people from Diddy's close circle. Jones mentioned Cuba Gooding Jr., Stevie J, and Young Miami, backing up his claims with photo evidence. To you. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking down at the 73-page complaint that was filed yesterday. In terms of allegations of celebrities, we're talking about Cuba Gooding Jr., being shown through still photos of what the complainant says they have videos of, of groping him. There are allegations of P. Diddy um, touching the genitalia and anus of the complainant. And also, if you look to the complaint here, there's a few Easter eggs here where it says the rapper redacted. Jones also accused Diddy of bugging all the rooms in his house with hidden cameras and recording celebrities and politicians secretly. What he did with the footage is anyone's guess. However, like he did with Cassie, Diddy is yet again denying the allegations. Attorney Sean Hawley spoke on her client's behalf, saying, Lil Rod
Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a $30 million lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. His reckless name-dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored as Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls. We will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. Mind you, Diddy's always been a pro at denying allegations. Back in the day, the record executive sat down on The Breakfast Club for an interview when Charmelaine decided to confront Diddy on the spot with a questionable audio clip of him. And guess how Diddy reacted to the situation? He acted like he didn't recognize his own voice. I swear to God, uh, would you like a reminder? Yeah, yeah sure. Play some. Play. Play. Hey, yo, Play. listen, yo, I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I like yeah. when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, when you my bed, daddy, yeah, I like when you when oh, you're right scrambling here, right and scraping for uh, shit. That was you. Scrambling. <laughs> <laughs> what? You said I like when you do it like that, Daddy. When you're scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> However, this Lil Rod situation is not one Diddy can easily wiggle his way out of. With all the accusations stacked against him, it's gonna be an uphill climb for Diddy to prove himself innocent in the lies of the law. As for fans, they believe Exhibit's words. One fan commented, R. Kelly who? Diddy making him look like a choir boy. Another commented, Diddy is sick. He turns people out, then laugh at them. Like he is saying to himself, I got another one, a madman. But what do you think of the situation? Do you think this is the end of the road for Diddy? Do you believe Leave Exhibit's words? Why did he refrain from talking about the situation again? Let us know in the comment section below.